And on the next day, Hey there viewers, welcome back. Today we're gonna do the rear disc brake job on this 2011 Buick Enclave. And it's pretty similar to the front that we did in a separate video, but a couple differences as far as the parking brake is concerned and uh, a little bit uh, as far as uh, the seals, the caliper slide pin seals, uh, not really my favorite style. So I'll show you a couple differences that are gonna go on with the rear brake job on this vehicle. Let's take a look. We are at 14, I think. Yep, all right, standard size. We are at 14 and 19, 19, 17, excuse me, to hold the inner and a 14, yep, or the outer. So unfortunately, GM didn't really give us a lot of room to get air tools back here. So, pretty much do this by hand. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna slide a screwdriver in here. We're gonna pry piston back in a little bit so we really don't want to rip these things out maybe go this way hopefully you can see without my big head in the way because some of these calipers the pistons are phenolic which is a fancy name for plastic by the way so you want to try to smush that in a little bit these are non wind back caliper pistons so it's gonna have a kind of a standard parking brake on the inside a drum brake type of setup a little tight still probably pull on that okay all right so let's take a look we can pop our pads out here Look for any tape or anything like that. This one's good. Uh, it's important to notice the squeaker is on the inside bottom on the rear brakes. So we'll make sure we always put our squeaker inside bottom for our back brakes. And this pad has a little taper to it, so we'll probably find something kind of interesting with the caliper pins here more than likely. Uh, the two back pads on this one, uh, the one with the squeaker, is set up a little different shape. Hopefully you can see that. And the outside is a little different. I think our replacement pads are the same though. GM kind of took our fun away on the air tools back here. Oh, good lord. They're making us do this all by hand. That is a special tool I haven't bought yet that uh, makes this a little bit easier. Oh, we're saving money. Flex head's not exactly working out to my advantage here. This, this, this handle is just long enough that it, it, hits, it hits the splash guard on the bumper. We'll make sure not to drop the caliper on our uh, arms and legs and toes this time. Huh. 
caliper hardware is going to come off exactly the same. You will notice that there's kind of a different fatness in this part here for the back ones. Next we're going to prep our bracket. By now you know the drill. You know why we do this. Well, when I did the other side, the pads were actually quite, quite tapered on one side only. And uh, one of the caliper pins was pretty dry. It wasn't seized, but it didn't move super easy. So we got it all cleaned up, got all the rust and stuff off the bracket. Just exactly what we did with this one at the sandblaster. Okay, let's take a look at the pins on this. So what I don't like is uh, this style of boot. It never seems to seal up good. I think GM used it in the 90s and uh, replaced a lot of calipers because the pins would seize up in, inside the bracket. So um, what you want to do, <coughs> excuse me, kind of give him a squeeze and he'll pop out. You can see this one actually still has plenty of lube on it. Um, one thing that I do is I put lube up here on this ceiling surface and I put some inside the boot. So we don't really need any extra on the pin, but I just put a little bit up there to help keep everything, you know, sealing up good. Kind of burp the air out of it a little bit, spin it. You can see that he moves pretty dang nice. Uh, this one up here moves pretty nice. So no problems on this side, which is good. See he's greased up pretty nice. I am going to put just a smidge extra on that pin. I know it looks like we're putting a lot on, but it's a thin coat. We're going to put some in the rubber just to get a little better seal. Then we're going to do the edge. And we'll burp the air out of him. Okay, spin him around. Everything feels good. Okay, caliper, where my towel went. It's now ready for the abutment hardware. Like I said earlier, the abutment hardware for the back is slightly different. It's just fatter as far as the area that the pads go. There's no spring. Other than that, same idea, different day. Really don't want to bend this up. Oh, there we go. Wait, almost had it. Okay, she just kind of clips in. Remember, we're putting the grease behind the abutment hardware, not not on this side. So the abutment hardware is all stainless steel, so it doesn't really need it. The caliper is cast iron. And there we are, dunno. Let's see if it says where it's made. M6, right side. Eh. Hopefully America. America. So next up we're gonna take this little torque screw out just like the front. That was easy. And I might just go ahead and right away put a little anti-seize on her. Don't have to worry about it later. Put it in the parts tray. And the difference is, on this side here, uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a little rubber plug that's uh, that's where your parking brake adjustment is. And I really like this idea. So make sure you save that little rubber plug. You got a torque screw and then you got a plug that covers a hole up in the rotor. And that's again where we'll adjust our parking brake. So don't throw that away. So next up, we'll remove the rotor. <laughs> don't even try.
So our next step on this is going to be, if we cannot pull this disc off easily, uh, that we're going to need to retract the parking brake, and that's done through this hole. So you can see the little adjuster is up there, and there's a rotor. What I'm going to do right now, I almost forgot. Try it again. Okay, next, we'll give our parking brake a little two to fluid film on his self adjuster and on the actuator underneath. Then, what I do, wherever I put my good screwdriver, oh boy, well, we'll just use this for now, is, oops, wrong way, is I retract the parking brake. It's all manually adjusted. So it's not as self-actuating like a standard drum brake uh, parking brake would be. The shoes are, last set I checked, was quite expensive, really. It's, I want to say it was like 60 or $70 for the silly little set of parking brake shoes. So pretty simple, uh, two springs and a uh, adjuster. So. We'll adjust this when we go back together. I'm not gonna take the parking brake apart. Um, I'm gonna clean my hub face, and you already know how that looks, so we'll do it in time lapse. Now that that's finished up, uh, we're going to go ahead and hit it with the fluid film. We're going to make sure we don't overspray our parking brake shoes. So we'll just be kind of careful. There's about five people in this world that actually do use the parking brake. I am one of them. Sponsor of the show. Brand new Napa rotor wrapped in plastic and paper. It's probably used less brake clean. We won't use less brake clean. I'll just open this up. Like Christmas. Ooh, they're blue. Look at that. Extra performance. So, we're going to do the same thing as we did before. I'm just going to adjust my hub. That little screw is pointing up. Put this guy on. 
down like such. Then put our torques in like so. And we'll tighten our torques down like that much. You really don't have to do this step. You do get some crud off of the off the rotor either way you look at it. So maybe you do, maybe you don't. Personal preference. I get dirty hands, so I'll wipe it off anyway. Okay, when we're done, we're gonna end with the rotor at the about 11 o'clock because we need to adjust our parking brake. So what we're gonna do, kinda gotta get pretty good ratchets on these things, but we're gonna tighten the parking brake. Until it locks. If you don't turn the adjuster a lot, a little spring inside there. Kind of uh, spins it backwards on you. And yeah, we're turning. So you kind of got to turn your little window. You can see what the heck's going on in there. So you can see it's starting to lock. I cinch them down kind of tight. Okay, so she tight, doesn't turn, and then I back it off like three clicks. So I'll click, click, and like click. Then I turn it. So you can hear it just a tiny little bit. That is exactly where I like it. So we'll make sure the parking brake works good. We're gonna put some fluid film on our little rubber plug. Okay, we'll put him like so back in. Don't forget him. Next order of business, we're gonna prep our caliper. Just using 150 grit sandpaper on these. They're not in too bad a shape. Looking good. And we'll kind of get in here. Get all the crud off. Okay, looking good. Give her the old wire brush treatment. Get up in here. Da, 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 da. Mm
like so. Next, get our tin mill. We gonna crack open the bleeder. I don't know why they don't use the nifty cool nice you know bleeder cap things on the back that they did on the front but we'll make do okay so I've got my bleeder little hose on that I'm gonna spray a boot might save us a couple minutes from uh, last time we're gonna use the double donger on the single donger piston so we'll just kind of Go off to this, that's nice. We'll go off to the side with it a little bit, no big deal. Kind of trying to make sure you guys can see this. There we are. Open the bleeder, like so. Brake clean administered and give her the squeeze. our piston retracted all the way without drama which is nice I'm gonna close that bleeder up not real tight we'll bleed it one last time after it's together I got all of that much fluid out of it all right so caliper bracket time we're gonna put some uh, Loctite on those caliper bracket bolts. Why? So the next guy that, never mind. difficult working around you guys but that's okay oh this gets done by hand so get nice and acquainted with it we can snuggle time lapse Now when I said tight, like in the front, I meant like 129 foot-pounds tight. So that's, oops, we're loose, are we loosening? Oh man, so yeah, torque wrench got a mind of its own some days. Oh yeah. There's 129 foot-pounds. Do it again. 129 foot pounds. Now, grab our pads. So, our pads, squeaker, 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 squeaker. Bevel, bevel, and bevel, bevel. So, our pads inside and outside are exactly the same, but if they weren't, if you only had one squeaker, it should go right here on the bottom. It'd be like nice if they put an arrow or something there. So pretty sure it alludes to that in the service manual, but um, aftermarket pads, that's how they make them. Be 
slip them in in the top uh, no springs on these why I don't know I didn't buy it I didn't build it I didn't design it I just fix it and we'll prep our caliper We'll make sure there are no kinks. I've done brake jobs on cars and there's like a knot tied in the brake hose, like a pretzel. So folks, you really gotta be careful when you put your uh, caliper back on the, you know, your brake hose, which you should inspect anyway, obviously on <laughs> that vehicle I worked on, they didn't. But you should be looking at it, you know, any other issues, things like that. that um, you could be having. So the pretzel brake line still kind of baffles me. All right. We're gonna take our 14 millimeter and our stubby 17. And I believe we're at 29 foot pounds for this little guy. Really? We'll figure it out. Well, I think I had it going the right way. Whenever it's backwards, it always confuses me a little bit. So I always test it in my hand before I uh, put it on the car. Factory spec. All right. Next up. Grab a diaper and our 10. Not sure what all this garbage is. Must have ran something over at some point in its life. I'll open that and just let it let it whiz for a little bit. Just make sure we didn't get any air in it or anything like that. Everything's looking good. I suppose that step's optional. I don't know. My goal, personally, when I do a brake job is a, a better job than what they would get if they took this to the dealership or something like that. Because uh, I always do this like I'm going to be the next guy to work on it. So I don't like rusty bolts, things like that. I mean, rusty bolts make you money, but it can be just a royal waste of time. So the fluid film and ANCs and stuff like that, just, you know, vehicles out here in Wyoming last an insane amount of time, like two, 300,000 miles on some of these and, you know, 25, 30 years old with hardly any rust. So, you know, I figure if you do a good job, you're probably gonna be the next guy that goes in and does that job again. So also make it easier for yourself. All right, so real quick fastener check. My bleeder's good, uh, caliper pin bolts are good. Uh, we torqued down the bracket bolts. Um, the little torque screw is in on the front. Annie sees parking brakes adjusted. Uh, caliper floats just exactly like it's supposed to. So at this point, we're ready to put the wheel on. So after starting that little road test, a little toot through the parking lot, we had a problem. We had a squeaky problem, and uh, it's not all that common where I do a brake job and you have a squeak concern. So first it was the uh, driver's side rear squeaking and then the driver's side and passenger side. And it was not related to my parking brake because you could apply your parking brake while you were moving and you could apply your service brakes while you're moving and the squeak didn't change. So I'm kind of going, okay, kind of going through things in my mind, turn back around and uh, lo and behold, Tear the whole thing apart, aftermarket. Kind of got to point a few fingers here. 
But what was happening is on my, this is the old abutment hardware because I didn't grab the camera when I fixed the vehicle. I mean, it's all good now. But um, the edge of the disc was rubbing on the abutment hardware. So I thought, well, can we tweak the hardware? And it was like, like, you know, not even a millimeter between the abutment hardware and the uh, edge of the disc. So what I did is I chucked up the old disc so that I can show you what I did. Kind of got to get a little bit creative with the brake lathe um, to make it happen. We're not actually going to cut into any part of the rotor that actually has contact with the pad. We're just going to machine a minuscule amount off of the edge of it, like literally the coating. And you could see that there was a couple spots and you could see the outside of the rotor kind of had a little bit of a, it didn't have a run out to it. It had a, like a fatness wobble to it. It wasn't a perfect circle. It was flat, but it wasn't a perfect circle. So what I did is I returned it to a perfect circle. So I'm gonna show you on the old rotor exactly how I did that. Cause I've had this problem happen on a couple of cars and uh, this is how you fix it. So typically on a drum, this portion in here, which is where the parking brake is, and on this uh, disc it's recessed, so obviously, but if it's rubbing in the inside and your parking brake is correctly adjusted, um, typically I machine just a smidge off of this edge here. But in this case, it was this edge that was making this, you know, noise on the abutment hardware. So what I did is I put our drum cutting attachment on with the tool in backwards. And this is what it's going to look like. So I've chucked it up. No need to make sure it's, you know, true in the lathe or you know, do your best, but we're not cutting any part that the brake pads are actually going to touch. So you can see I put my tool in backwards. And this one's got a little chunk missing out of it for balance. Um, my aftermarket Nappas did not. So I wasn't worried about machining that down. But I'm just going to bring this up till it contacts. Okay, back out to the very end. I'm at 10 thou right now. I'm going to take a 5,000 pass fairly quick. Take another pass. And I would back up. If I needed an additional pass, let's say I'm going to take 10 thou off this time. Let's get that a little closer. Looking at our old rotor, you can see the pads do not ride out to the very edge. Um, I don't want to machine all of this off. I just want to machine enough off. I try it a couple of different times and see that it, it fits correctly on the vehicle. All right. Test drive number two with the windows open. Sweet silence. Brake jack. Silent braking. Feel better now. That bugs me that aftermarket parts 
really bugs me. I shouldn't have to, you know, I maybe kind of get it if the car's 35 years old and they haven't made the parts in like 10 years that came off a shelf or something. But Pete's sake, what is this thing? Seven years old? Six? The fronts were fine. I guess I should be happy over that. Downside is you get to take everything back apart. Pads out, the caliper off, the caliper mounting bracket off, the brake rotor. The only thing I didn't have to do was reset the parking brake. We already had that set up. Unfortunately. I guess I should maybe just quit complaining. Got it folks <clears throat> a rear brake job actually a four corner brake job if you watched our first video on a 2011 Buick Enclave uh, it's pretty easy pretty standard um, I think it pays about 1.2 hours for each you know group for the back and group for the front uh, if you're wondering about how much you should pay for a job like this um, I think it's another 0 0.8 0 0.8 hours and if you look in the book uh, to do all four rotors so you divide that out 0.2 for each rotor, something like that. So uh, parts cost kind of depends on what it is that you buy. So anyway, uh, if you liked what we did here in this video, please make sure to subscribe to our channel, give us the thumbs up, and as always, 
Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.